I'm uh, Ray Dirks. I'm originally from BC, but I've lived here since the end of 1985. I uh, am primarily right now a curator. I run the Manite Heritage Centre Gallery, but I'm also a painter and a photographer and a writer. I just I do some design work. Just what is just a whole hodgepodge of artistic things that have become my career. What came first? <laughs> Um, well, what came first, I, myself being a, a good Mennonite boy when I was a kid, I knew I could draw, but I also knew that art was not something that was a, a worthy profession. So when I finally decided that art was really the thing I could do, I went into commercial art school in Vancouver. And so the first thing I did was some graphic design, actually some window design in a department store in Vancouver for a few years. Huh. And then I ended up going overseas to uh, the Congo to work as an illustrator. At that time, the government of the Congo had the reputation of being the most corrupt government in the world. Right. And it probably was. Right. Um, but that's all, if anybody knew anything about the Congo, that's all they knew. Right. It was about the dictator. I quickly found out there that people looked at illustration much differently than we tend to, where we okay. see it as decoration there. They right. saw it as as important as the text. It was supposed to explain okay. something. Right. And so I quickly learned, don't add in little elements just because right. I think it makes it look more balanced or whatever, because somebody would get hung up on, why is that chicken there? And I'd say, just because it balances the picture. No, yeah. but why is the chicken there? <laughs> so finally I say, okay, I'll get rid of the chicken. So I just quickly anyway learned that ordinary, I was dealing with ordinary people in ordinary situations all the time. And so right. you quickly learn, as anybody who gets immersed in other cultures, that ordinary people want to be the same around the world. They just want to have a decent life. And the art is what's given you a language to communicate in this environment. Right. It brought me into that environment and it brought me into situations where I could see ordinary life right. unfolding in front of me. And then when I came home, I decided, you know, I want to keep working with those kinds of images. I want my career to center around bringing images of decency and dignity of right. people we don't know much about or people we stereotype uh, back here. And then I also eventually started thinking, well, I would also like to, if I could, give voice to artists from Africa right. to bring those kinds of messages to us through their art. Mm -hmm. Because I can be, then I can be a bridge, but it's their art that ultimately will speak. I put together a book and an exhibition that is uh, my photographs, art from uh, artists from the countries I went to, right. and stories that I came up with just or from ordinary people that I stayed with in 17 different countries. So over a period of about two and a half years, I visited 17 different countries and just stayed with ordinary people. Like I asked when I go to a country, I'd say, I want to just stay with ordinary people. And I remember uh, when I showed up in Zambia, I was coming from Zimbabwe by bus and I was going to a place called Choma in Zambia. And I'd never been there before. I was just hoping there'd be somebody there to meet me at the bus. And fortunately there was, and they took me to this uh, bishop's house and and I asked, you know, where, where am I going? And he said, well, you're going to a village. And I said, thank you very much. And he said, there were people who said, we don't want you to go to a village. We want you to go to a place that's got electricity. We want you to go to a place that's got good choirs. We want you to go to a place that's got a nice building and where you can sleep on a bed and blah, blah, blah. But he said, you kept saying you wanted to be with ordinary people. And most of our people are out in villages. So we're sending you to a village. And I said, thank you very much. And they sent me to some place that was 30 kilometers off the road. And uh, I was dropped off there, and it was just extraordinary. It was just, I mean, to call it a village was not really, it wasn't that big. <laughs> but see, you're not And there's the no electricity, no, no vehicles. One guy that could speak some English, they sent him along with me. And when the vehicle that dropped us off left, I mean, it was just dead silent. And if you wanted to see somebody, you had to walk there. And if they weren't home, you turn around and walk back. <laughs> wow. And it's just... Uh, for me, it's just it's just wonderful That's experiences, it. and then I just you just try and get into the rhythm of the place, and and if if you're open to just being thankful, people accept you so quickly. I find in those kind of places, whether it's Zambia, Zimbabwe, Ghana, or India, or wherever. Right. I mean, I've stayed in villages in a lot of places, and it's just for me, it's just extraordinary experiences. Mm. And then I just I write right. and I document and I take pictures and I ask questions and I eat things I've never seen before and uh, right. and just be thankful because these are people with nothing who give you everything. Right.